want to study in your favorite university and settle abroad but facing a trouble in speaking writing reading and listening to english or understanding english yes these are the four main aspects that you need to pass your ielts exam required to move to a foreign country on study or permanent residence basis in ielts vocabulary is the key to getting a good band good score in all the four skills that is reading writing listening and speaking ielts speaking is a face to face conversation with the examiner where the examiner tests you on your fluency your pronunciation and your grammar certain tips that you can keep in mind when you are having a speaking test in ielts is not to get confused with the language do not worry about your accent at all doesn't matter which accent you are using all that is required from you is to be clear in what you are talking about second thing is that do not memorize the answers it should not seem to the examiner that you have memorized certain phrases certain answers to questions before because then the conversation does not seem natural another thing that you can use in your speaking test is use a wide range of grammar because you are being tested on your grammar avoid using fillers fillers like uh mm, yeah okay yes i like i don't like these are fillers stop do not use them in your speaking test it's very very easy to get a good band good score of 7 8 and even 9 in speaking because speaking is not that difficult all you have to do is prepare for the speaking part effectively and intelligently for the speaking part or the writing part we do not need to memorize the entire dictionary word by word it's not possible you cannot memorize all the words but certain there are certain words there is a list of vocabulary that can come handy when you are appearing for your ielts exams so all you need to do is learn those words effectively along with their meanings and their usage in a sentence generally in speaking part what i have seen over the course of my career is that students they face a problem due to shortage of words their uh, their vocabulary is not uh, rich enough to let them to allow them to hold a conversation with the with other person so when it comes to the speaking test of course we know that it is a speaking test and we get more conscious about it we get nervous about it so the first thing is when you are appearing for your speaking test and ielts avoid do not at all get nervous and before hand prepare your vocabulary so that you know where you stumble where you get confused we have to remove those confusion or the confusing words that we use from our learning part all together for the speaking part it is very important to understand learn and use famous idioms phrases and the uh, and how you can hold everyday conversation with the examiner the examiner is going to ask you about your family life your work life your uh, uh, your overall view about the environment around you so in that case you need to have opinions about certain ongoing issues as well because that is what you are going to be tested upon okay next thing is that we generally get confused or we keep on repeating words like or phrases like i like i do not like 
I agree. I do not agree. So what happens when you keep repeating these words over and over again? The examiner understands that you do not have a hold over the language and it can reduce your score in IELTS. So what we are going to do, I am going to give you a list of sentences or phrases that you can use instead of uh, I like, I do not like, I agree or I do not agree. Okay, so these are phrases or sentences that you can use in your writing section as well. So let's get started quickly. The phrases that you can use in place of I like. I adore. I am interested in. I love to. I am passionate about. I relish. I delight. I savor. Words that we can use in place of I agree. I accept. I comply with. I assent to. I accede to. I consent to. Now when I am using these propositions after the after each word which uh, which has the same meaning as agree. These are the prepositions that they uh, that go along with these um, words, these synonyms for agree. Now, how can you say I do not agree with you? I am sorry, but I do not agree. I respectfully disagree with you. You and I may not seem to have the same opinion on this topic. That's a valid point, but. By using these phrases, you will not sound disrespectful to the examiner. This means you have acknowledged his or her point of view as well, but you want to give them your own opinion. Now, how do we say I do not like? It's not my thing. I prefer. I am not interested. I am not interested. That's not me. I am not a big fan of it. I am not keen on it. So these are your personal opinions when you are holding or when you are having a speaking test in IELTS. I'm sure if you will make use of these phrases when you are having your speaking test, it is definitely going to get you a good score, maybe of 7, 8 and even 9. Make a note of these words these phrases which you can use in place of i like i do not like i agree and i do not agree thank you